Welcome back to Enigmatica 2 Expert Mode, and it's part two of our quest for power during the night time, i.e. Uh, no more solar power. So we've got uh, our, some of our ethylene running. It is in our system, and it is getting us 32 buckets at the moment. And that's increased about seven buckets in the last few minutes, so it's going to be okay, at least to get started. And you can see, obviously, that's where we got the, the storage down here. So um, you actually, that's a good point. It's got lots of gas. In fact, it's full of gas. So uh, that's probably going to have stopped the system downstairs. Let's just quickly check whether that's actually the case. He doesn't use up a second type, so we only have the one type being used. But let's just go and check over here. Has this turned off or will it be turning off shortly? Uh, there's a pressurized reaction chamber. But yep, yep, there we go. So ethylene is building up and that, of course, will build up uh, as well as the system. So we'll see what the rate is once the, um, the system comes online uh, as far as how we use it. So to get started with that, we need to build the... Um, well, basically the reactor. To do that, we're going to need a few pieces. Uh, to get started at a minimum, you're going to need four things. Uh, you're going to need a turbine controller, which is absolutely required. It's just like a smeltery controller, if you like. Uh, and one turbine, but you can have up to 50 of them. <laughs> Let's start with one. You can see in the tooltip there, it says one to 50. Okay. And you'll see possible modules there on the gas turbine controller. Now, of course, not all of those things you need. You can add them on at will. Uh, but the absolute things we're going to go for is one of these, one of the manual and turbines, and then a gas intake valve. And this only works if you have mechanism. Remember, this thing uh, can also, well, I said remember, but I haven't really talked about it. Uh, it can actually burn fluids as well. Um, so you can feed lots of different types of fuels into it. Um, so I don't know. Oh, God. Uh, I'm just looking at the list down on the website. Uh, ethanol would be would be burned in here. Um, let's take a look. Ethylene, which is what we're using. Syngas, fuel, biofuel, liquefacted coal. Yeah, so lots and lots of things that we can actually make. But let's get started with something that we have, of course. Uh, ethylene, I think, is the largest, but I think, well, we'll have a look if there's any larger, but I think it's actually ethylene. So we're going to need one controller, one turbine, a gas intake valve, and then a flux generator. This is the output. What kind of power do you want out? In our case, RF. And that is uh, exactly what we want. And again, it says uh, up to six. So if we have a really, really high power generator, then of course that's going to be um, that's going to be needed. But uh, we'll get started with the minimum and see what we need to go to from there. So how many patterns have we got? Because <sighs> I'm going to probably need a few. Uh, we've got five. Why don't we just tell the system to make some more? Um, yeah, we've got enough materials, so that can actually go there. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about the actual, uh, this recipe itself for the individual modules, because I'm only going to make one of each to start, but things like this iron frame, I am going to worry about because, uh, we're going to need quite a bit of that. Uh, so there are some bits and pieces we're going to need. So I'm going to want to be able to encode, uh, how to make iron bars, how to make the, uh, iron frames, these, these things. And then we also, for that, we want to have to make the mechanical components. So all three of those should let us then make, I think that's all we need. In fact, all we need to make the, um, let's just put them in here. Uh, all we need to make the frames. So let's take a look at how many of those we need. We need four for one of those. Another four here, so eight and 10, 11, 12. And then here are the two efficiency upgrades. You don't need them at a minimum, but they are around. So uh, yeah, so we sort of say four, eight, 10, 12, 16, 20. Also, let's just say 20 iron frames. Can we actually make those frames? Whoops, that's a that's a backpack. 20. Uh, we're missing iron rods. It doesn't know how to make those yet. Okay, so how to make iron rods? We make them. Ooh, that's interesting. Uh, you can make them plate presses and metal presses from Muscle of Engineering, but this is the actual uh this is the recipe version. Let's just do it with a regular piston. Assuming the system knows how to make pistons, of course. Uh, that is not always guaranteed, but uh, it can actually make pistons. Good. It knows how to do it. Now will you make the iron frame? Um, frame 20. You still don't know I made the iron rod. I think one of the recipes is actually using the wrong type of iron rod there. Let me just grab that back. Um, where is my... Where's my recipes? Uh, probably going to be... Yeah, four iron bars, four iron rod, an iron mechanical component. Yeah, I think that's the wrong recipe. So let's just get it in here. Uh, in fact, we'll just wipe it. Put you in there. We want the 
Iron rod, iron bars. Yeah, that is the recipe. Is it not? There's no modified recipe anyway, so that is definitely the right one. Although that says iron rod from Vul Vulpes Library, and what did we actually click through to before? Iron rod immersive engineering. Accepts any stick iron. Clearly you do not. <laughs> okay, let's just get rid of them and actually request a rod from the system. Uh, craft iron rod. Let's just request four anyway. It can actually build them. So we'll get that to build it. We'll assign this manually into the recipe down here, put it on the system, and then I'll craft the rest. And while I'm doing some of that crafting, I think I found a bit of a bug. If you're following along, maybe you can advise if you've fixed it. Otherwise, this recipe for the advanced control circuit, it's needed as part of the controller. Um, bit of a problem with it. Whenever I make this thing, and you can see here, this is the recipe. It's a valid recipe. If I shift click in for a start, if I shift click that, it always puts in the electronic circuit from Industrial Craft 2, even if the other one's on screen. So wait for it to come back on screen. Shift click, no, always go to, the, always to that one. So that's annoying for a start off. <laughs> Second of all, if I put this into the molecular assemblers and tell it to craft one, so uh, let's just craft uh, another one of these next. It says it's all valid, no problems. And you press next and it doesn't do anything. But, <laughs> but if I just go here and I say, well, just uh, insert this, please. Uh, in fact, let me just craft one of the precursors. Uh, that won't take it very long at all. Um, we just need some of the more of the alloys as well. Alloy. So let's just craft four of those. And that won't take it very long either. Uh, so let's just get the circuit recipe. So if I shift click in, uh, now if I shift click into a crafting grid, it works. And if I then paste this out, it works fine. So for some reason, auto crafting just fails on that specific thing. Whether it's something to do with recipes or not, I don't know. Anyone know about that? Maybe it's something to do with the configs. Regardless, uh, if I have the right things there, it will then be able to craft these. And I need two of them to get going. So um, that bit is probably going to work. Uh, let's just cancel you. And we've got two. No, in fact, this one is also scheduled. Even though it's got everything that it actually needs to make it, it's just sitting there going, no, no, I'm not going to. And uh, if we just have a look downstairs, there isn't a problem with channels or anything, is there with the um, the uh, stuff here? So uh, nothing in there, nothing in there. 16 of 32 on that side, 16 of 32 channels. Uh, I actually want to get the, uh, not so much the dense, that's, that's, well, it's connected. You can see there's that. Uh, that's that connected, that's disconnected. Um, that should be just fine. Yeah, we don't have any issues. 16, so what? 10, 14, 15, 16, yeah. Yeah, that's all fine. So yeah, there's nothing wrong down here. Uh, it just doesn't seem to like those recipes. So I'll have to craft them manually. They work perfectly fine manually. So we're just gonna need them for the controller. Speaking of which, let's actually just get that off the ground so that everything will now work. So even though I'd like to auto autograph them, the system's like saying, no, you know, you're not going to autograph them, even if you actually want to. So uh, I'm just going to cancel each of these and get the materials back, uh, hopefully. And that I just need some of the elites. Uh, let's just see. I need some of the reinforced alloys. So alloy. Did I get those back? I did. So I can actually just use them now. Excuse me. <clears throat> And then we can just use that in the middle and just get two of them that way. They combine together to make this control circuit in the middle. You need a genetics processor to do that. And that is just some printed engineering circuits, some more of these advanced circuits and some new computer other course. I've already made that bit because the rest is uh, going to be good. And there we go with a gas turbine controller. This is some iron tubing and iron frames is what we made previously. So the iron frames, as you can see, it's those iron bars. Iron tubing is just the usual kind of stuff that we've made, aluminium wire and basic coils. We've already made the redstone stuff and we've seen that before. So all of that made together makes our gas turbine and there's our gas turbine controller. That's the first piece. Next piece we're gonna need is a manual and turbine. And we see everything in there is the same apart from the center section, which is a manual and turbine rotor. So the turbine rotors are going to need um, at least eight of those. And then we're going to need manual in the middle. So that will get us the turbine rotor. So that's nine. 
and there we have a manual and turbine so that's that piece and then we need uh basically taking stuff in and bringing stuff back out again so taking stuff in uh do we have everything we need there yes and uh how about rf okay so we've got one piece here we don't have or haven't made before power modules uh basic energy cube we've made those before <sighs> i'm going to be short of steel components aren't i you know i should just automate that i really should just <laughs> I'll do it off camera. And there's our power module. Power module, and that means we get a flux generator. Well, once we had a little bit of silver and tin in the place, and then the flux generator itself, which can go there. So those are four basic things to actually get this going. I think that should be enough to get started. We'll see. Uh, we're also going to need a gas uh, export bus, and it's probably just going to need a regular export bus, and I don't think I have any... Can I actually... Oh, I can actually autocraft it. Good. Missing treaty wood planks. This is something I'm short of. Um, and why I've got that tank right there. So let's look at planks for a second. Uh, I didn't ever go past actually crafting this stuff via bucket. So we can just grab a bucket for now. And uh, one of those. Yeah, excuse the red color. That is one of the mods in the pack that I can't know anything about. Yeah, I couldn't remove the mod, I suppose. But uh, that well, adds all the custom animals. Um, there is the treaty wood planks. We'll just leave that in there for the moment and um, that's good enough to go on the export bus it's going to need that there it goes it'll craft one of those we need some daffodils uh or at least dandelion sorry dandelion yeah let's we'll get yellow color basically it's what the gas stuff always needs and the gas export bus we can just grab that there we go one gas export bus and i think we've got some um smart cable already about 30 of it yeah smart cable Anywhere to the system is fine, and since it's probably going to go at the back of our building, um, we can just um, connect it up to the existing cable out there. Now, down here, see inside, I have our smart cable running right here. That's, that's a nice, actually, uh, a nice position. We've got uh, 11 channels left, so that's not a problem. Well, I think I'm probably going to do, and you can build power storage into this multi block if you want it to, uh, capacitors, I think they're called um in this particular mod but we can already build capacitors or batteries via ender io and i kind of like the multi-box structure of uh, ender io's basic capacitor bank as you can see there this is stuff that we can probably craft uh we need uh, grains of infinity so that's that's definitely need something we don't have yet but we can set that up fairly easy and lead treaty wood planks again steel electrum uh, yes, yeah, so I am going to need to get an automation for that treaty wood planks. If you've got any ideas, put them in the comments below. But for now, um, like, why don't we just see if we can actually connect this up. And I'm going to connect this up uh, in the open, I think. Are we going to connect it up in the open? Hmm. I'm going to put it underground. Just for a bit of a change. Because I've got the solar stuff up there. That'll they, They'll be staying there. I don't need to actually do anything with them. And then where is... This is going to be we're way above roof level right now. There's, uh, yeah, there's our machines. So we're up above them. So I'm just going to lay a little bit of room here. Okay. And let's just put the spaces there. That's close enough to almost get me out. Uh, I'm running out of, uh, I'm running out of uh, things. Oh, uh, that'll do. Yeah, I can get out there. That's fine. Okay, so in we go. And let's put everything down. So we want a controller. Um, I want the, probably the gas input and the intake valve. I'm going to just put it there. I'm going to put the controller down. Turbine controller. It goes multi-block. That's good. Uh, we're going to want a turbine. And well, let me just actually put these down. It says you can build this however you want. So, cool. And then we want the RF output somewhere. And uh, I wouldn't want it to go up, I think. So why don't I just put it uh, for now? Uh, let's just put it back one. Okay, let's put it back here. Can this go multi-block like this? Seems to be fine. Okay. Uh, consuming nothing, pretty much. And here you see the interface. So we've got some input. We've got our processing, <laughs> our turbines, and then the output. So connected turbines, one manual in. Your peak production is 1200 RF per tick. So this is just with the minimum. And if you remember, each of these produces 300 RF per tick 
during the uh, daylight. So it's very handy that just with the minimum we can replace all of our solar panels, or more likely add to them. So, and then we uh, basically, fuel efficiency is 110%. Not sure that's the way we should really specify efficiencies above 100%. Uh, someone might be a little bit more picky than I am, but yeah, I'm not sure that's how it's supposed to be done. And then fuel consumption. We'll see what that is in a minute. Uh, output configuration, um, I'm not going to worry about for the moment. That's nothing in there. And then clear internal buffers is fine. Now I'm just going to configure the output to the system. So gas, there we go. And this needs to be configured. So I'm going to need some way device online cool i'm going to need some way of specifying the gas and we can't just well we may not be able to put it in a bucket i don't think you can <laughs> or at least unless it's heavier than air it will be very hard to keep in the bucket unless you put the bucket upside down um then i suppose uh at least it wouldn't be pure but uh, hey let's let, let's can we actually put this i know mechanism has like this this block you can actually do it with uh no yeah you are not uh, you're, you're not liking that. Uh, there is gas tanks and uh, there's like a little sampler kind of syringe or gas tank. So a tank, uh, we want a gas tank for this, I think. Uh, gas tank. Can we get one of those? Yeah, there's the mechanism ones. And thankfully they just need a little bit of osmium. And if I've selected ethylene, will that fill up there? Whoop, yep, I just want a little bit of it. Just enough to sample and actually go outside. It is going to go dark soon, so all my power is about to go off. It still doesn't produce any, enough during the day right now. Uh, I, I just have too many machines. You'll see right there, it's just died. So <laughs> I've got to uh, to improve this a little bit. Uh, we may have a little bit left in the A2 system. We'll see in that in a second. And can we configure this to be ethylene? We can. And now this thing has kicked on. So intake valve, and it's now producing... 1200 hours per tick, presumably. Okay. And how much are, are we actually consuming? Not very much, because this thing is not connected to anything. So it's intelligent, which is good, meaning that if it's full, it'll shut itself down. I like that a lot. And then that means I just need to connect everything else with some sort of power conduit. Now I have, um, I have power conduit from mechanism. Uh, yes, basic universal cable. Do I have enough of it, though? Uh, excuse the flickering on the screen. That's just uh, the, the shaders. Uh, basic universal cable. It looks like I do have enough of it. Uh, for, we'll get started with that, but we are going to want to move across to um, energy conduit pretty, pretty quickly. So why don't I just get that sorted? Um, let's just connect to you. And then connect to that one. There we go. Yep. And can I get off? Can I get off? Okay, there it goes. And it looks like it looks like it is outputting. And let's take a look at the fuel value now. Yep. So 0.2 millibuckets per tick. So we times up by 20. Uh, so that's gonna be um yeah, so that's that's gonna be four millibuckets per second. Okay, so that seemingly is going to be okay is this producing power it is presumably it's being dumped into the inside of the building of course so that is why that's not actually building just yet it's not increasing uh but it should do once everything in the building get, gets caught up with that and uh we should end up with more output power um we can go and take a look at how much it's actually draining of our uh existing supply i what uh what's left not sure how well it's going to do that. We may not be able to see it unless we look at it for a little while. Let's take a look. So we've got 32 buckets. Yeah, it doesn't give me like millibuckets. So it's very hard to see over time. But if as long as that stays 32, it means the system's full, which means the system downstairs is keeping everything full and we should be good to go. So why don't I just try, I don't know, crafting something like steel. Uh, that will do the job. We want some steel plates. Why don't we just craft 10? Uh, so does the system down there can I actually craft? And it looks like it is crafting just fine. Okay, so that's good. So during the night time, we now have a functioning power system and we can add to it fairly straightforwardly and obviously with our own expense with fuel by adding more turbines so we can make more manual turbines. How much manual do I have? Man, I have five. <laughs> that's not enough for another turbine. Uh, yeah, that means more ardite, more cobalt. Um, ardite we can get, I think, via 
Um, yep, by sieving. If we want to do that, we're going to need to sieve Crush Netherrack only. That's our only option. Netherrack, obviously, we can get that from um, from from regular Netherrack via hammers. And you can generate netherrack via Batania and via putting redstone into lava and stuff like that. But to be honest, you can get so much of it just with our with our unbreakable tools. It doesn't even matter. You just vein mine it and you'll get... I mean, how much netherrack do I have? Yeah, I have like one and a half thousand. You can just put this through a pulverizer. I think it's a pulverizer. And you'll get the crushed netherrack. Uh, pulverizer. Yep, there it goes. Crushed netherrack. And then uh, back here, we can just then say, what was it again for the recipe? We wanted uh, Ardite, yeah. Ardite uh, all pieces. Oh, we get a chance on Diamond with Crushing Nether Rack of 32%. Uh, the same thing for Cobalt. So if you imagine uh, a full stack of this stuff, which is what I've just put into that machine, will get us, um, so a third, so 20 of these. And they divide by four, so we get five um, five Ardite, basically. That gets doubled, so we get 10 pieces of each. Combine them both, we end up with 10 manulin per stack of netherrack. There are thereabouts. So it's not very much trouble to actually go through and sort this, and to get yourself more turbines to add more power if needed. And the reason I almost immediately want to switch away from basic universal cable is that its capacity is uh, basically 1280 RF per tick, and that machine with one turbine produces 1200 RF per tick. So yeah, um, we're going to want to go up to Conduit from uh, Ender.io. Conduit is much nicer to get started. It starts out at like 5000 RF per tick or the equivalent, and then it goes upwards from there five times, five times again, so that's 25 times. Uh, the original sort of capacity or bandwidth, if you like, of the power on the cable. So very much worthwhile going to. So all I'm going to do is just make some more of, oh, well, just make some more power pulverized netherrack, uh, maybe a couple more stacks. We'll get some of that downstairs in the sifter and, um, well, the sieve, and we'll get that uh, producing us some more um, manulin. And here's our main sifting setup. I've just added another row of drawers. When you do this, and you have this connected to a high priority bus to the your regular network, break your smart cable before adding more drawers. Otherwise, your, cable, your system will immediately try to store whatever it can in this. Unless you want to set up explicit filters on the storage bus, I never bother. I just need to change it too often. You'll see lots of get stuff is getting stuck here because we've now got more stuff that we've not built to deal with before. Ardite, Cobalt, also Magnesium, and Lithium, and there's probably at least another metal as well that I probably need to get rid of, probably Boron. Uh, so I'm just going to put that here. So there's our cobalt, there's our ardite, there is our magnesium and lithium, and there's thorium as well. So I will need to break this again and probably put a few more, a uh, few more drawers at the top uh, or at least down on this side. Uh, let's just get rid of that for a second. There it goes, and then we just need to lock these when they go in. You can just uh, right click on the on the. Um, controller itself if you want to. I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, and those are locked. So then we'll just put thorium in there and uh, boron is probably going to be the last one. Uh, boron, yes. I think everything else looks like it's stuff that we already deal with. And that's going to be that. We can obviously just filter stuff down into that chest that we want it to sieve. And as long as we're coping with it in the storage system, then it will all be fine. You'll see right here we've got 14 cobalt, 22 ardite. Uh, if I just draw all of it out of the system, because I've already got a little bit of each of those in the system, uh, cobalt, uh, we've got 17 there, see, and ardite, ardite. Yeah. So we can just put those back into the system if we wanted to, or we can just dump them in here either way. And we should see, obviously, the right amount. So yes, we can use those to generate our ores and indeed put uh, crushed netherrack into that or anything else we want to be generically sieved. Um, is there anything else down here I want to cover just now? No, I think the power is going to be just fine. So why don't we just go and see uh, the back now? Is it dark? It is dark. How are we managing to keep up with the power? Uh, are we basically fully charging our battery? That looks like a good sign. That looks lit up, which means it's probably, yep, it's full. Good. So during the day, it's full and it's nighttime now. You see it's not draining, which means we are definitely keeping up with things. And is this now fully stopped? Um, it is at putting current production 480 RF per tick. That's really the actual rate or 
roughly, the actual rate of our system as it is at idle when, when things are running. So good to know what uh, we roughly have to deal with. Of course, we are going to want to switch over regardless, um, well, fairly soon. So yeah, pretty happy. So that'll do it for today for power. Now I've got that out of the way, uh, I don't have to be restricted by nighttime anymore, which means I'm probably going to get back to more nighttime pursuits, maybe into some astral sorcery next and get that mod further on in progress. Let's get that uh, tank out of the way for neatness's sake. And uh, yeah, so I've enjoyed today's episode, getting some, some stuff done. I probably want to dump this back into the system, this ethylene, by the way. Uh, it's just that we don't really have uh, much per capacity, so uh, I can't really I can't really dump it. Anyway, that can just be stored in as a as a block in the system, and we'll come back to it some other time. So hopefully you enjoyed the episode. If you have, give it a thumbs up. We'll see you next time for some more Enigmatic 2 Expert Mode, and probably some more Magical Pursuits again next time rather than Technology ones. But for now, as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.